There's a new MLB leader in extra base hits. It's still a Dodger, but it's not Mookie Betts. Shohei Otani, a cricket bat, and how that's changed his swing. Let's talk about it. Let's get locked on Dodgers. You are locked on Dodgers, your daily Los Angeles Dodgers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yo, 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 Dodger fans. Welcome to Locked On Dodgers. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, the number one local sports daily podcast network. Locked On, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On MLB for $20 off your first purchase. This is the daily podcast covering the Los Angeles Dodgers, bringing you the smart fans' perspective on our boys in blue. You can find us every fan podcast and on YouTube simply by searching for Locked On Dodgers. And if you want to become an everydayer and never miss a day, all you have to do is listen or watch every day, which can be made easier by subscribing on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. If this is your first time listening, watching, welcome. My name is Vince Samperio. I'm back. Jeff, there's my co-host who's been holding it down for the last couple episodes. Jeff and I are both lifelong Dodger fans that have been covering the team for almost a decade. We've been doing this podcast for half of that decade, and... uh We've, we've seen a lot of Dodger games. We've talked about the Dodgers a lot, and we're here to do so once again and hopefully bring you some smart and rational thinking about the Dodgers. And well, it, baseball isn't always rational. We'll get into that because Shohei Otani had been struggling a little bit, Jeff, and then he's been catching fire lately. Uh, he seemingly figured out a, something that helped him out that involves um, a bat that – has the handle of a baseball bat, but the barrel of a cricket. I don't know if it's called a stick or a bat. I don't know. Sorry, cricket fans. But uh, yeah, Jeff, and now he's now the MLB leader in extra base hits. He had another home run in the Dodgers win over the Twins on Monday. And he also added two doubles on top of that. Yeah, well, the athletic calls it a cricket bat. So we'll call it a cricket bat and tell Fabi and Ardaya if it's not. And don't blame us. Uh, yeah, you know, it, it's kind of funny that. Shohei Otani at the top of his game, two-time MVP, and yet, you know, still, and this wasn't even in the midst of his slump necessarily. This was during the rain delay on Sunday, so he had already kind of broken out, but still looking for ways to get better, and he felt like he, uh, he, he said, uh, he said it led to pretty good results, so I'll continue to do that. Basically, um, he said the idea was to emphasize his bat path, keeping a flatter swing through the zone for longer to maximize his thunderous finish. That's uh, Fabian's words. Not, I, I assume Otani didn't say thunderous finish uh, or whatever the Japanese equivalent is. Um, but Aaron Bates said kind of everybody started using it after that. And we know that uh, the James Outman is one of them who used it. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see if it totally paid off, but Outman did hit the go ahead home run. The, that provide the game winning run if it was 1986 the back of his baseball card would now say game winning rbi is one uh because he drove in the run that that uh put the dodgers ahead for good so it's uh you know we'll we'll take it and and otani like <laughs> he, he's on fire he's he's as hot as i mean maybe hotter than he's ever been because this is the first time in his career he's had five straight multi-hit games yeah obviously on, on the hip front and you know, last week we talked about the struggles and everything else and kind of waiting for everything to pick up and uh, everything's picked up. He's now hitting 345 on the season, the no PS over a thousand. Like I said, he leads the league in extra base hits, leads the league in doubles, now up to three home runs and has, you know, been a part of the offense for the Dodgers the last few games when Mookie Betts has hit a little bit of a, of a struggle you know, Freddie Freeman hasn't been completely struggling, but you know, hasn't had been the the Freddie the, that we saw in the in the first week or so. But for the Dodgers, again, for, this is the guy they pay for in terms of offense. This is who they're looking to, to to build around and continue to build around with the rest of this core. And it's been fun to watch. Yeah, for sure. It's it, it's remarkable how hard he hits the ball because, like that home run he hit uh, tonight. It was 107 miles an hour off the bat, and it didn't look like, I mean, it looked like, oh, there's a deep fly out off the bat. Uh, and it looked a lot like the two home runs he hit in spring training 
uh, that were, you know, two left field like this one was. And like you could tell, okay, he hit that pretty well, but then it just keeps carrying. And then you look like, oh, 107 off the bat. That's why it carried well because he hit the crap out of it. And like the bat speed, Daniel Hudson, who we're going to talk about in the third segment, he said after the game, like it's just ridiculous how hard Otani hits the ball. Uh, and, and it's something about that torque in the swing. And so, you know, it, it makes sense that he might need to occasionally go back to basics because he does swing so hard. So to make sure that he's swinging hard with the right bath path, bat path makes a lot of sense. But uh, it's it's just, it, it's always been fun to watch, but it's so much more fun to watch when he's wearing Dodger blue. Yeah, and that's something that, you know, last year specifically, maybe a little bit years past too, like the Dodgers have had a great offense, but they haven't had the stat cast you know, star where they haven't really had people hitting over the ball over 105, 107, 110 miles an hour. And Otani's at that. You said 107 for that home run. That wasn't even his hardest hit ball of the day. Uh, one of his doubles was 110 off the bat. And, you know, 110 isn't something we didn't really see from Dodger players almost at all the last few years. And Otani's done that uh, multiple times this season. And he's currently in the 99th percentile for average exit velocity. 94.4 and he's at a the 100th percentile in barrel percentage 19.6 at the time he's barreling the ball up so while we knew the struggles were there in terms of not always working out we did mention that the fact that he was still hitting the ball hard and you know some of those in in korea that were hit would have been homers in other stadiums you know some of the other hardball hits were either caught or, or ended up being on the ground but you hit the ball that hard enough times it's very rarely not going to work out in your favor yeah, absolutely. And like we talked about, like you said, they, it was more about launch angle than exit velocity. He wasn't hitting it at the ideal launch angles. He was hitting too many ground balls. Uh, but even then, like he was, you always felt when he came up, like, okay, something good could happen here. And now we're seeing the fruits of that. And, you know, like I said yesterday, if, if you are at a point where a good, you know, four game stretch or whatever, five game stretch now can make you go from having a lousy season to an awesome season, then it was too early to worry about the lousy season uh, to start with. And, and I think our patience is being paid off. I, I think that probably because it's Otani, more people were willing to be patient because he is a proven superstar. Uh, you know, obviously with the struggles that Gavin Lux and James Outman and Chris Taylor and everybody else are having right now, you know, maybe it's people are less inclined to be patient because it's true. None of those guys have the ceiling of Shohei Otani. None of them have the proven track record. They all have, various degrees of proven track record, but not the track record that Otani has. Uh, but it is, you know, like, like we talking about Outman with that home run, maybe that is something that does the, the cricket bat maybe helps him figure things out. At least put, put contact on the ball a little more often. Outman was getting robbed a little bit too, hitting the ball hard and, and but right at people or whatever. So maybe he's due for a breakout. And we've seen over the years, like Chris Taylor and Jock Peterson, both in previous years, went through early early struggles where Dave Roberts just kept on running him back out there. And people said, why is he still running him out there? And both of those guys ended up being huge. I, like, cause Jockey was like 2019 and he ended up being a huge contributor that year. Um, and I think Jock in 2017 too. And then he was a huge contributor in the 2017 postseason. Chris Taylor was one of those years where he ended up being really good. He struggled really bad early. In the, I thought it was 2018 because everybody was saying, why is Taylor ever playing when they have Matt Kemp? And I got laughed at for saying, well, Taylor's probably a better player than Kemp right now, even though Kemp has better stats. And by the end of the year, yeah, Taylor was playing much better than Matt Kemp, you know? And, and so Roberts has a history of sticking with guys, letting them work through their struggles. And obviously that's easy with Shohei Otani. It's a little harder with some of the other guys, but I, I think track record says he's going to at least give them a chance to break out uh, at least for a couple months. Yeah. You mentioned that bottom of the order and, strikeouts uh has been a little bit of an issue for that bottom of the order we're going to look into that look into some interesting notes about umpiring the last week and talk in general about the dodger offense so make sure you keep it locked on dodgers today's episode is brought to you by game time if you are looking for last minute dodger tickets or even dodger tickets in, in advance of, a, of the games coming up but you don't know where to go there are or there is one app for you and it's called the game time app game time app is the authorized ticket place an authorized ticket place of major league baseball so you don't have to worry about any any scams or anything like that and prices on the game time app 
actually go down the closer gets first pitch. That's why it's called game time app because uh, you, you wait till game time to go get your tickets. So go check it out. The Dodgers have games this weekend, Saturday, bruised our Gratterall bobblehead, even though he's not playing right now, uh, the, the great, uh, the bobblehead's really cool. Him doing his, his, his uh, signature little walk off the mound uh, as an ode to his brother. So if you want tickets for that, go to the game time app. They got last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals. You can check out, if you haven't been to Dodger Stadium, you can check out the, the view from the seat that you're looking to get because they have that all in the app. So go check it out right now. And if you, ever find tickets for cheaper in the same section row that you got on the game time app. They have the game time guarantee, which will credit you hundred percent, 110 percent of the difference. If you do find that. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. And right now for a limited time, all users can get $20 off any MLB purchase of $150 or more in the game time app with code first pitch terms apply. That's code F I R S T P I T C H for $20 off until April 14th only. Download the game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I want to thank you for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen of the day. Make sure to find us wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. And if you're looking for something to watch during the day, make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring the biggest stories without any screaming or things of that nature that may be featured on other uh, outlets. Lockdown Sports Today brings you can't miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels at part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Jeff. So the Dodgers, uh, that bottom of the order has been struggling. Outman, Lux, uh, Chris Taylor, when he's in there, only has one hit on the season. And, you know, in general, the Dodger offense ha- has kind of been a one, two, three it is really, you know, the, the main guys. And then you have Will Smith and Teo, Teoscar and, and Max Muncy doing pretty well. And then you have bottom of the door, which haven't done much. But in general, overall, you know, the uh, I saw a tweet out there that the Dodgers were leading the league in strikeouts. Now the Dodgers have played at least two or three more games than most teams, depending on uh, how many games those teams have played. Uh, so we went to look more at the numbers in, in terms of strikeout percentage. Strikeout percentage, the Dodgers are still a little in the top third of the league right now in strikeout percentage. But when you break it down even further, uh, it really breaks down to the that middle to bottom of the order. You look at, but this is before the Monday game against the Twins. Max Muncy, Tasker Hernandez, Chris Taylor, James Outman, all with strikeout percentages above 34%. And then you got... You know, everyone else there, Austin Barnes, 28%, Kike, 25%. Then after that, you get down to 23% and below for the rest of the guys. But it does seem to be when the Dodgers get guys on base and, you know, the the just put the ball in play would work. Sometimes the Dodgers do lose out on that because of strikeouts. Yeah, and, and that is one of the inherent challenges of having your lineup clustered. We We've seen suggestions that the Dodgers ought to, mix up the lineup, you know, spread out the good hitters. And and I'm firmly opposed to that idea because uh, then you're just moving the, the outs up in the order. Like if, if you were starting inning and you said, okay, uh, here are the three batters who are going to get out this inning. When do you want them to bat? You would say, well, let's have the other six guys bat before them, you know? And, And I mean, that's the logic of putting together lineup. You put your worst hitters at the end. That does mean that most of the time you're going to have, your worst hitters clustered together. Uh, and, and so it does put a little more pressure on your best hitters to do a little bit more, but really the pressure is on the worst hitters to be the worst of a group of good hitters, not actual bad hitters, because that's what's right now for the most part, the bottom of the Dodgers lineup. It's just, it's bad. Most of the time, you know, Outman did get the big Homer here. Lux did get a bloop single. Um, but like when Chris Taylor's in there, he's in one of his phases right now where when he's cold, I've mentioned this before, when he's cold, you watch him swing, you wonder how he's ever gotten a hit in his life and how he ever will again. Uh, and then he gets on a hot streak, you know, oh yeah, he can hit anything. Um, and, and, but right now he's definitely in one of those cold streaks. Kiki Hernandez, you know, is definitely going through it right now. Uh, you know, Jason Hayward before he got hurt, there's a lot of struggles, uh, you know, Austin Barnes is still leading the team in batting average, so he's not in that list. But, you know, most of the bottom of the lineup is struggling. Even uh, Miguel Rojas, he's hit more home runs, but he is, like, overall, like, he he's not doing 
necessarily what you would expect. I think the three home runs are masking the fact that overall he hasn't been great this year. Um, obviously, we'll take the three home runs over not having him. Uh, but yeah, it's and I guess you know I'm not going to rant about the umpires because I am limiting myself to the, uh, on that, and I'm definitely not going to waste an episode that when the Dodgers won the game. Uh, but some of these strikeouts, like Max Muncy, he is, I think, tied for the team lead in strikeouts. Yeah, he and Teoscar Hernandez both have 21 strikeouts. Muncy is getting a lot of, and Muncy's always gotten bad calls uh, uh, over the inside part of the plate or off the inside part of the plate. He gets a lot of calls against him. This year, I've noticed he's getting a lot of calls above the zone. I, I It's like the umpire's like, well, you hit like you're 6'3", so I'm going to give you a zone like you're 6'3", instead of 5'10", or whatever you are. And, and uh it, it's, you know, and Mookie Betts, we saw it tonight, like he had at least three really, really bad calls against him that were several inches outside called strikes. I saw a tweet that last year Mookie had the most called three strikes that were out of the zone of anybody in baseball, 11 of them. He struck out looking 45 times last year. 11 of them were on pitches out of the strike. So that's almost 25%. That's that's a lot. And, and so like, and, and that... The what was it? The tweet that the do you have that tweet? I think I sent it to you about last week. The the umpire umpire scores for the Dodgers and the Padres. Yeah. So again, we're not making this comparison of, of Dodgers Padres. Uh, you know, I know Padre fans love that. But uh, um, scorecards the the Twitter account they put out that last week, Padres and Dodgers. Dodgers were the second least favored team at negative two point five runs uh, from the umpire scorecard, while the Padres were the most favored. With 3.9 runs uh, in the in favor, so positive. Uh, but you know the Dodgers won most of the games that week, and the Padres did not. Yeah, Dodgers went four and two. The Padres went two and four. But yeah, I mean, losing two and a half runs in one week to umpires, and we saw a lot of that. I mentioned yesterday the last Diaz game on Friday. It was like a run and a half, and there was that game against the Giants that was uh, about that much too. It, it was a rough week for umpires, and that continued on this Monday game. I assume tomorrow's scorecard and you know, the Dodgers did get one of those same calls that went against Mookie. Uh, I think it was just John Tumpain struggles with right-handed pitcher to right-handed batter outside corner. And the Dodgers had a left-handed starter, so didn't get to take advantage of it as much. Um, but you know, I like John Tumpain a lot as a person. Uh, he, he is a literal hero. He uh, talked a lady down from jumping off the Roberto Clemente bridge on his way to a game in Pittsburgh in 2017. Uh, so I have nothing but respect for John Tempain as a person, uh, but I noticed he's from near Chicago. So I was thinking maybe instead of an umpire, he could be a tour guide at the museum called Wrigley Field after they build a real stadium for the Cubs to play in. So then everybody wins. Cubs get a real stadium. John Tempain isn't umpiring anymore. And, uh, you know, that's all good. Yeah. Uh, somebody, Mookie, you know, has kind of been out of the element at the plate. He's had a handful of missed calls on the outside corner, not just in yesterday's game, but you know, over the last few games. And you know, maybe that's forcing him to to kind of approach that bats differently. He got one later in the game on Monday. Somebody was tripping from the day. I, I think he said Dave, but I'm not sure. It was Roberts, but, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's one of those where I've advocated before for Roberts to get thrown out in certain situations when the umpires are bad. But and for the most part, the Dodgers have been in the lead in some of these games. So it hasn't been you know, that opportunity for us to, to disagree hasn't presented itself because the Dodgers have been winning a lot most of these games. But it still sucks to see at bats get taken away because of missed calls. Yeah, I, I you, you know, I'm not necessarily in favor of Roberts. I, I don't not oppose the idea of Roberts getting tossed. I just don't think it would actually do anything at all. Um, I don't think the players need that evidence to show that he's behind them. But I did think it was interesting that Roberts was chirping on that call because there's no way Roberts can see where he's sitting that that's a bad call, um, other than Betts' body language. And so that's that's a case of it had already happened twice to bets earlier in the game. They had been had a chance to go back and look and say, oh, yeah, he was definitely wrong on those. So everybody went into that at bat knowing Mookie's been getting screwed today. And then, you know, so he could tell from Mookie's body language. And so that's why he's chirping at that. So, yeah, you know, I, I'm not opposed to that, but uh, I don't think it necessarily helps anything. But, you know, it, it, it's fun to see. It would be fun to see Roberts get thrown out just for the novelty of it all, I guess. Uh, but, yeah, it's, uh, you know, Mookie, you could see that it took him out of his game today because he had to swing at those pitches. So he had, you know, a, a fly out the where it, the pitch was outside, but he's like, well, I have to swing at this crap because you're calling it. 
Yeah, and and that's where you know eventually, hopefully, MLB gets to the point where we don't have to worry about you know that specific part of the game being mishandled. But uh, at least for this season specifically, uh, we're just gonna have to deal with that and just hope that uh, we don't get Angel Hernandez anytime soon because he had a, a couple of things happen over the weekend. Uh, that he missed a few calls too. So, you know, whatever the Dodgers keep winning. Uh, we, you know, we're, we're, we're the strikeouts aren't just on the umpires. Just a couple of them have been not most of the, of them. And that bottom of the order does have to bring it up. Even if you're just putting the ball in play, you know, guys like Outman and Lux and, and, you know, Hayward, when he comes back or whatever, even just putting the ball in play is more beneficial for the most part than a strikeout, especially, you know, in terms of just making the defense play defense. Yeah. Yeah, anything can happen when the ball's in play. All right, so Daniel Hudson has been really good for the Dodgers. We haven't shown him the proper amount of love, so we're going to give him that love here coming up, so make sure to keep it locked on Dodgers. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is fun because you can win up to, up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks right now as you take on their app during baseball season don't miss your chance to add your favorite players from the diamond in your price pick entries whether it's strikeouts rbis or first inning runs take your pick of more or less and add them to your price picks entry today and the dodgers you know you're a dodger fan you you have a little bit of a cheat code of price picks because any any top four or the top four in that order uh on most days are going to get you very good offensive numbers you can pick more or less on singles doubles home runs Hits plus runs plus RBIs, which is one of my favorites because, you know, a guy like Otani who can get on base and then score, that's, you know, you'll have two out of a more or less of 2.5 in the first inning. Freddie Freeman, Mookie Betts as well. They have total bases. They have pitcher strikeouts. They have demons and goblins, which gets you the the bigger multipliers and the payouts. So I'm telling you, I, I, I'm in on price picks. I, I've been all in for a few weeks now, and, and it's fun. And, uh you know, it, 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 there's a chance for you to make it beneficial to your wallet as well. So go check out Prize Pick, download the app today, and use code Lockdown MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. That's a first deposit match up to $100 with the code Locked On MLB in all lowercase when you download the Prize Picks app today. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. I want to thank you for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen of the day. I want to thank you for being an every day, or if you are one, if you're not one, make sure to listen or watch to this uh, here podcast every single day. You can subscribe and make it easier and get notified when our episodes are ready. If you want to go beyond the podcast and become a Locked On Dodgers insider, all you got to do is go to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Dodgers and get text directly f- from us with news and thoughts and reactions and different things that happen as the Dodgers season goes along. You can text us back directly as well with any questions or your reactions to our reactions. And Jeff, uh, you know, I was out of commission over the weekend. You were handling things and uh, there was some stuff for the lockdown Dodgers insiders to get before we get to Danny Hudson. Uh, the Dodgers made some transactions over the weekend, a lot more uh, bullpen and, and roster shuffle to Nelson Lamette. Ended up getting DFA. The Dodgers acquired Connor Brogdon from the Phillies. Michael Grove is still on the roster. Gus Varland is going back to OKC right before they play his brother's team. So hopefully he got to at least say hi to him. Or I don't know if he got to travel to Minnesota or not. But yeah, Jeff, uh, what what to make of of all this shuffling early on? Yeah, it's kind of wild that Grove survived all this because we assumed after he uh, pitched those three innings on Friday – and struggled again that he would be sent down on Saturday, and then he wasn't. Instead, they DFA'd Lamette, and then we figure out why that was, because they acquired Brogdon, but Brogdon wasn't ready to be added to the roster yet, so they called up Varland, and so we thought, okay, well, when Brogdon is ready to be added to the roster, then they'll send down Grove, but instead they sent, instead they sent Varland back down. And so I guess they still value Grove's length, um, that he can go – multiple innings, even if they're not very good. Um, and he did pitch well in the the last two innings of his last outing. And so, you know, maybe he figured something out and he's going to be awesome from here on out. But, uh, you know, it, it seems like they are expecting some big leads or big deficits or something uh, because they, they already have Ryan Yarbrough, but maybe having Michael Grove too, who can go three innings for you is something that they value more than, 
Maybe they're looking for quantity over quality in that particular roster spot right now. Yeah, Michael Grove, uh, it will be an interesting case study, assuming he doesn't get better or doesn't find a role because, you know, there's a lot of stats out there. of The worst Dodger ERA is like through a certain amount of innings, through a certain amount of appearances, a certain amount of games. Grove is up there or leading in some of those categories. He, you know, will look good for one inning, not good in the second inning, and then sometimes he just won't look good at all. But uh, we're going to talk about someone now who does look good, and, and that's – Daniel Hudson, Daniel Hudson came in and, and pitched the eighth inning in Monday's game and has been one of the steadying forces of the bullpen so far in the season. You know, Evan Phillips is still that guy and still, you know, exactly what we expect from him. Ryan Brazier has, has kind of turned things around after early on and, and he's sitting and looking good after his last few appearances. But Daniel Hudson was a guy that, you know, could have just called it a career, didn't have to come back, especially after – hurting his injuring his knee with the Dodgers and then coming back and then getting injured again. And he wanted to come back. He wanted it to be with the Dodgers. They've mentioned that on the broadcast a few times and all that hard work is paying off because he's been, like I said, the, the Evan Phillips is the guy, but Daniel Hudson has been that, that force in the bullpen that's kind of kept them together so far in, early in the season. Yeah, absolutely. It's been awesome. And it's, uh, you know, he's just been lights out. Like we we're rooting for him. Even if he, was just kind of a mediocre reliever right now, he'd be a good story because he was, he's almost retired a couple times. And, but, you know, both times is like, well, I don't want to go out with that injury. And, you know, he made it back last year, but just for a, a couple games and all that. Like he would be a great story, even if he wasn't pitching great. But fact is, he's pitching awesome. He's only allowed three hits in his uh, six innings pitched. One of those was that monster home run to Jorge Soler. That's the only run he's allowed. Like he's just been, pretty dominant hasn't walked anybody he struck out seven in his six innings like he has been even if you don't know that he is old and missed most of the last three seasons and all of those other things he is just a great great relief pitcher for the Dodgers this year so far and it's been a lot of fun to watch him when you throw in the stuff we do know about his struggles it's even better yeah it, it's been great to see and Someone that we weren't sure, I want to say a couple of weeks into spring, we weren't sure where he was going to be, what when he was going to be ready, you know, might be a guy that, that needed a few weeks at the start of the season. And then he ramped it up pretty quick and got going. And, and he, he's been on, you know, I had to add him to the opening day roster and everything else. And yeah, he's been great. And for this Dodgers bullpen to have, you know, Phillips, to have Hudson, two guys that you can count on for the most part so far that we've seen. Is good for those later innings. You know, now we're trying to bridge – the Dodgers have been trying to bridge the gap the gap from those earlier innings to that. You had Brian Brazier, who's, like I said, has turned it around a little bit. The Dodgers' bullpen is going to be strong once these starters get a little more stretched out or a little more efficient. You know, y Yamamoto's gone five innings in, in his two starts. I'm sure he'll get – you know, be able to get that to six innings – here moving forward. Bobby Miller had a, a really bad last start, but his first start, you know, he was able to, to give them the length. Glasnow has been pretty good in, in terms of, of giving them innings. You know, James Paxton even went into the six, and, and we saw how it worked out. Paxton went six, and then you had Brazier, Hudson, and Phillips all come in and, and, and shut things down. So it, it's been a lot of moving pieces, but at least for the Dodgers, the stalwarts in the back end of the bullpen have been there all season so far. Yeah, got a shout out Ryan Brazier too. That play, taking a comebacker okay. off his body and still having the the presence of mind to run over and cover first base and make the play. You know, obviously it helped that it, I think it got him on the glove or just the hand be right below the glove, you know. So not not like he took it off the forehead and then covered first, but still like I uh, there was no delay. Uh that, that was that was great. Yeah, that was that was impressive. And, and Brazier's been pitching well. Seems like Daniel Hudson was this year's version of Jason Hayward in that he signed a minor league deal and we, the fans spent all spring wondering, is he going to be on the team? Is he not? Whereas the Dodgers all along knew that he was going to be on the team. Like that's how it was with Hayward that last year. And it's how it was with, with Hudson this year. And, and both times it's like mid spring training. It was, we find out, Oh, it's just a foregone conclusion. If he's healthy, of course, he's going to be on the roster. And so, you know, it, it's been, but you know, Hudson being healthy, is not a foregone conclusion the last couple of years. And so it's been great to see. I hope that he can stay healthy all year. You know, it would be great for him to, 
to win another World Series title, this one in the right uniform, and, and retire that way. I'm sure he'd rather retire that way than with one of his knee injuries the last couple of years. So I, I'm just so happy for him um, because, like I said, it would be a great story even if he hadn't had the injury problems. But with all he's battled through, it's it's just awesome. There's a lot of candidates to get a final out in a World Series on this Dodgers team that probably come before Daniel Hudson. But if he was the one to finish it, I have – him finishing now in 2019 on my phone and then i could have 2024 on my phone and then you know i could uh could have fun so start start a collection yeah Yeah, there you go all right jeff uh dodgers got a couple more with twins it did rain a little bit in the game but nothing to the point of uh delaying it we'll see how the weather plays out the rest of the next few days but then the Dodgers come back home and uh you know hopefully i don't think it's there's a slight chance of rain on Saturday, but uh, that's going to happen. So, yeah, we're good. Yep, yeah. I just want to shout out uh, a kid named Jackson Markham in Oregon. He's a 10-year-old. He listens to this show in the car with his dad on the way to school in the mornings. And uh, his dad's a Locked on Dodgers insider. Uh, Jackson's just a 10-year-old every day. And uh, you know, there's not much cooler in this world than a 10-year-old every day. Probably one of the smartest baseball minds in Oregon at the moment uh, for yep. age 10. But if you're not 10, you can still be an everyday, and I'll still think you're cool. But Jackson might be a little cooler. There you go. All right, that's going to do it for today's episode. Thank you all for listening. Thank you for making Lockdown Dodgers your first listen of the day. Make sure to find us wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. All you got to do is search for Lockdown Dodgers. You can become an everydayer by listening or watching every day, which can be made easier by subscribing and be notified when episodes are ready. Remember, the Lockdown Dodgers postcast is available from our buddy Jeff Fox. He's there after <laughs> Oh, Pete Fox. I was looking at you when I said it. Uh, He's there after a majority of the Dodger games, breaking down the game individually. We're still here for you every Monday through Friday, breaking down the Dodgers. So just go check that out if you want. Locked on Sports Today and Locked on Sports Los Angeles are two 24-7 streaming channels from the Locked on Podcast Network that are on YouTube that you can check out for all the news stories and thoughts from around the sports world and LA sports world. Come on Lockdown Dodgers Insider at jointsubtext.com slash Lockdown Dodgers and get notified uh, with our thoughts and reactions and news and everything else from the Dodgers world. You can find us on social media, Twitter and Instagram and TikTok at Lockdown Dodgers. Jeff is on Twitter at Stein Dog. I'm at Vince since 91. You can DM us on either of those accounts. If you have any questions, comments, you can also send those via email. LockdownDodgers at gmail.com or via voicemail text at 323-863-5625. We're here every weekday morning, and we hope you'll be here with us when you get in your car or if you're at home. Terry Smart Advice by Podcast, Lockdown Dodgers. And remember, you don't have to agree. You just have to listen. Have a good one. We'll talk to you tomorrow. <laughs>